All right, I am. I've got everything all hooked up. Um, checklist, right? Muffler. I got all the exhaust stuff done. I've got all the electrical stuff done. I've got um, all of the fuel connected in the carbs. I've got the linkage for the throttle. I've got the air, the oil uh, full flow connected. I've got the breather lines connected. Um, so. What I'm going to do now is build oil pressure, apparently. So, what I'm going to do first is... <laughs> I'm going to put this right here. Um, so, what I'm going to do to build the oil pressure is I'm going to pull off my coil wire here in the middle. I can get this off. Oops. Okay, so that will not allow it to start. However, it will allow the starter motor to turn over the uh, engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over until the oil light comes off, turns off. So let's see what happens. Okay, that took exactly like I said, 30 seconds and the oil pressure light turned off. So now, let's give this a shot. I will put this in here. Don't smell any fuel. Let's see what this is here. No, nope, that's a little bit of oil from something, but it's not fuel. So let's see if this motor will start. Timing's a little bit off, or the car is a little bit. What is that noise? Let's try it again.
Well, that was interesting. All right, I'm gonna restart it. And uh, I'm gonna try to go for 15 minutes. Well, the only weird thing is that I started getting low fuel pressure, so I'm going to uh, consider that break in to basically be done, even though it wasn't quite as long or revving quite as high as I should have. But, you know, a couple of weird things happened and they made me uncomfortable. So, it worked though. back off these carbs because <laughs> I was using this to keep my rev up and then when I stopped the motor it backfired because it was giving it gas even after I turned off the motor and the exhaust was pretty hot so okay so the gas should be pretty off pretty much off all right well consider that a successful break-in I'm gonna have to look and see what's going on with the um, fuel pressure. Yeah, I guess I trust this enough to <clears throat> put on the um, this rear engine tin. Let's see if it fits over the uh, lights on. I feel like it's a new level of heat that the old engine didn't see. So let's see what the clearance is on this. Yeah, that clears better than the uh, vintage feet. All right, I did a bunch of adjusting on this. Um, what was interesting is I actually had to change the uh, fuel, uh, the, the RL44 uh, relay, the switch for that used to be on the D plus of the generator. And that worked great because uh, it wasn't on when the motor was off. But on this alternator, since it's direct wired, this is actually hot 
even when the motor's off, as long as the key's in the ignition. So you can't use that as a switch. The fuel pump always turns on. So I tried connecting that switch to the um, WK on the um, oil pressure, and it worked, except that it kind of caused funky behavior, like the oil light would flicker and whatever. So what I, connect, I connected it to eventually was the uh, DF here, and that seems to work, although when it's a really low idle, it seems to uh, um, cause the light to come on, but um, it does uh, make the fuel pump behave properly. So, all right, let's, uh, let's, let's take a listen after I did carb adjustments and various things. just it's idling just a little bit rough um, but it runs great once you rev it up and uh, that's it um, I got to put this bumper back on um, the engine does run hotter than the 1968cc no doubt um, 1968 you can see here I'm getting ready to put this up on the stand so that I can uh, mess with it fix oil leaks etc and I had to put this guy on here take off that rear engine tin so that the um, mount would fit on there okay <laughs> 